Thanks everyone for being here. Again, I'm Colonel Nicole Lucas. I love that these are recorded, so if you ever need a laugh, go and look at month after month of me trying to give these opening comments. It's hilarious. Um, so like we've been trying to do, we're gonna start with some recognition. This is a little bit overdue. Um, we're gonna give the two trophies for the Commander's Cup um, for 2017. So um, the Commander's Cup program is basically our intramural program on the installation. So it consists of nine team events and four individual events, running events, that kind of thing. Two categories that we award in, a large unit category and then a battalion or smaller uh, size category. Um, last year, or the year prior in 2016, it was deaf, it was a medical, medical thing. MAMC won one and 62nd Med won the other. So they're gonna give up the, the trophies this morning. Um, so in the large unit category, uh, 17th, 17th Fires is the winner. So if you wanna come on up. And um, feels a little bit like giving the award to myself, but I'm glad to do that. So uh, the 627th Air Base Group is the winner in the small unit category. So come on up. So just a quick plug, the 2018 Commander's Cup uh, intramural program is already underway, so if you need information on that, we can push that out uh, to you at the unit level. Definitely spread the word, because um, it, it goes throughout the, the course of the year, and you do have to, you know, we try to do that um, spread out across the year, because obviously some units aren't here because of training and mission and that kind of thing. So. If you, if you do track those events, then you can get, you know, if you, when you're home, you can sort of surge and compete for those and be in the running for the trophies. Sir, over to you. Thank you very much, uh, Colonel Lucas. Good morning, everyone. You see me, see me with my big group of friends here this morning. This is me. This is First Corps. All joking aside, um, the CG and the Command Sergeant Major, they're busy this morning. They have a battle rhythm ev event directly related to our readiness, so they're taking that brief. General Milhorn is uh, out of town uh, pursuing professional development, so th this is who you got. <laughs> bon matin. Um, it, it, again, thanks for being here this morning. Thanks for the opportunity to say a couple of words. Um, reminded this morning how uh, fragile what we do is. Three people uh, died on the highway this morning on the, their commute. Um, the three fatalities, my understanding, at least from what my wife tells me of the news, uh, they, they didn't cause the accident, they were the victims of the accident and lost their lives, so it reminds us to be cognizant of uh, the dangers around us, not just in our day-to-day -day jobs, but as we go about in our lives. Thanks for being here and being the conduit to uh, your soldiers, airmen and airwomen, what they do every day and how the community goes about th their business and their life here, which from our Canadian perspective is amazing. So thanks for being here. And, and I end by, unfortunately, I wanted to embarrass my wife a little bit. She's running late. She got mixed up of where the meeting is, but I don't know if it's a thing here, but it is International Women's Day today. So my, uh, I tip my hat to all the women here um, that are part of what we do. And I, I would have liked to be able to embarrass her. I'll, I'll try to do it when she walks in late and we all acknowledge that she missed the start of the meeting. No, well, we'll see, I, I'll deal with that later. <laughs> so thanks again for what you do, and I'll hand over to my battle buddy from the US Air Force. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I actually, sir, I haven't seen you since the last time, I think at the TTX, it was the day after uh, Team Canada beat the American women in hockey uh, in the preliminaries. 
How did, how did that final work out, though? Later on? Uh, I'm sorry. If we're going to get into the Winter Olympics, right? There's only one Olympics that count. The summer ones, I don't even know what that, those sports are. The Winter Olympics. 35 million people in my country. How many in yours? 350 million or about. Okay, overall standings of the Winter Olympics, we kicked your ass. <laughs> General, at the end of the day, you guys would do much better in the Summer Olympics if you take your skis off for the races. It slows you down. Uh, well, folks, on behalf of Colonel Sankis, who's actually also taking a, a mobility briefing this morning, hearing about all of our readiness, um, which, you know, kind of a standard, and I'm sure you, you guys in the Army have the same exact thing as you talk about the mobility and, and potential contingencies. Air power will, will absolutely win everything, and then the Army will come in afterwards. So, with that, hello? Is this... Okay, you're done. <laughs> yeah, I actually, on that, I, I'm done. We've had a, a really busy month. Um, we surged a lot in February. We flew over 4,000 hours um, all around the globe. As of last week, we closed out our last uh, Antarctica mission uh, for the season. Um, and on three days this past month, we had an airman on all seven continents. Uh, so it's pretty remarkable how busy we are, as well as supporting all of our joint partners out there. So again, Nicole, thanks for the great support, and over to you. Thank you. And thanks, gentlemen, for the opening comments. Sir, you're welcome to give them any, any time if you're going to recognize International Women's Day. So thank you. Um, we do have a lot to cover this morning, so I, before we get started, I just want to remind you that this is our community update. So I really appreciate seeing as many um, of you here to receive the information, but remember to ask questions, If you know, take down the note. We stick around afterwards at the end so we can take one-on-one -on -one questions. For me personally, I am always interested in how do we do what we need to do for all of you better. So we will take your, on your table, there's a place where you can write it down. So as you listen to the brief, just write it down. Um, and we'll, we gab those at the end and I take a look at those. So please um, give us your feedback and please be comfortable asking questions in here. We do, as we get ready to roll into the spring, um, there's a lot of things happening on JBLM. There's also, if you're noticing, there's a lot of, as the weather improves, we begin a lot more construction work. Uh, as we get a budget and money, we'll do a lot more of that. So those will affect us as we live and work and move around on JBLM. So we're gonna, you're going to see some of that here this morning. And please, um, you know, please ask us questions uh, as we get through this this morning. Sir, did you want to? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> recommended not to. So my seniors. <laughs> All right. Go ahead, Todd. Thanks. Good morning, uh, Todd Eckstein, Deputy Director for DPTMS. Just wanted to highlight a few uh, calendar events. Uh, for those of you that uh, want some beer and uh, want to run at the same time, we've got the uh, Shamrock and Run uh, this weekend, uh, always a good time. And then on the uh, 11th, of course, we've got Daylight Savings Time, so you can uh, spring forward so you won't miss church. Um, and then we uh, start the uh, spring break uh, for some of the school districts uh, as well the following week. Uh, of course, we've got the, uh, the Donza on the uh, 30th, uh, which uh, corresponds with the, uh, the Easter uh, holiday. Uh, and we've got the Chaplain's Artep on the 1st of April with the uh, combined Easter uh, sunrise service. And then uh, you can see we've got kickoff uh, Kids Fest on the 5th of April over at the uh, MWR uh, Fest Tent. And then we'll go into the uh, Volunteer Recognition Week on the 16th to the 20th of April. And then uh, we've got the uh, finishing off the week with the CG's uh, golf scramble. And then uh, always a good time to get rid of your stuff or get more stuff you don't need at the spring free flea market. Um, and then for, uh, for May, uh, from the 30th of April to the uh, 4th of May, our service members will be going out into the uh, train areas and also the Contoman areas for spring cleanup. So it's an opportunity. Uh, to make uh, JBLM just an even better place and uh, pick up all the trash that we have and make it safe, safe for our soldiers in the train areas. And so you'll see them out and about uh, doing that. And then on the 10th of May, we've got the uh, volunteer recognition uh, luncheon. And then on the uh, 12th of May, uh, if you've never had a chance to uh, participate, the uh, down and dirty uh, mud run, which is uh, right here behind us at the uh, soldiers' uh, field house in the uh, area around there. And then we've got the uh, Retiree Appreciation Week on the 15th to the 19th of May. 
uh, which culminates in uh, Armed Forces Day on the uh, on the 19th. And uh, so, if there's any questions, that's all I have. Thanks, Todd. All right. So, Todd mentioned a couple volunteer opportunities. April is Volunteer Recognition Month, and we take volunteers very seriously here at JBLM. We have uh, registered over 3,000 volunteers on the installation. Um, I would encourage you from the units to please take this information back to your FRGs and your key spouses if they are not in attendance today. So we'll be having a volunteer fair on April 4th from 9 to 12 at the McCord Club. This is a great opportunity to meet up with all the volunteer agencies that we have on the installation and also a good way to see what opportunities are available to, to volunteer on and off the installation. So put that on your calendar. And then during volunteer week, we have uh, several events that are going on that entire week and we like to give away free things. Uh, and thanks to our partners in MWR, we're able to do that. So April 4th, like I said, the volunteer fair. April 17th, we're gonna have a cookie social in Waller Hall on Lewis, Maine. Thursday, April 19th, free bowling. And then Friday, April 20th, another cookie, so, uh, cookie social at the commissary on McCord Field. So please, please come out and support the volunteer activities. And then um, if you are going to be, if you are in, registered in, in college or university and you are going to be graduating um, any time between now and August, we invite you to attend our annual graduation ceremony. This is a great way for you to celebrate your accomplishments and celebrate it with your peers and other folks across the installation. Um, it's a big event. A lot of planning and effort goes into it, and it is open to anyone who will be graduating um, sometime between now and August. So we encourage you to, to participate. And with that, I'll be followed by Karen. Good morning. Uh, my name is Karen Fox. I'm the program manager for Family Advocacy. So there's a change happening at Family Advocacy, and it's the transition from the CRC, the Case Review Committee, to the IDC, which is the Incident Determination Committee. This is the committee that reviews incidents of domestic violence and child abuse here at JBLM for both the Army and the Air Force. So there's going to be a slight change in the membership of the committee, and it's now going to be chaired by the garrison commander. In addition, the commands who come to represent their service members will also get to vote. But to be eligible to vote, they have to compl uh, complete their IDC training online through AKO. They have to scan and send their completed certificate to my office and they have to go through a background check through FASOR on the treatment side, which is the Family Advocacy System of Records. Now, it sounds daunting, but it's not too much different than what we're already doing for the CRC. Um, let's see, so the training link is up there, as well as the email drop box. And ultimately, we're getting this out in a variety of formats, so we're talking to commander first sergeants uh, at their courses, we're talking at desk sides and doing trainings and through our brigade partnership. But when an incident happens and the commander's notified, they get a command notification letter from the behavioral health side of family advocacy. And in that notification letter, all of the information that I'm saying here today is going to be in there for them. So they're going to get the link, they're going to get the email, and they're going to get the form that they have to fill out to complete that phase or check. So if you have any questions on this transition, it goes live on the 21st of March. You can contact my office at 967-5901, or you can talk to me afterwards, I'll be available. Thanks, Karen. So I just wanna foot stomp this, and what I'll do is I will send to the brigade command teams as well because this is a change, and it's a change for your battalions and your companies, in particular your company command teams. It's a pilot program, there's a lot of installations we're tagged to do it, JBLM is one of those. So we're gonna move out smartly with this, but in order to be a voting member, which is a good thing, it's a really good thing to have the chain of command in, have a voice in this room and be a voting member about what happens, they have to complete this training. So I'll send that personally to you guys, but, um, and again, we'll, we're messaging it now, we'll communicate directly with the company commander when, they have, when they're notified that they have to participate, but please take this one back, that this is a change for us, and it's, it's a good thing, but it requires some work on the front end. It also means that the company commander, the first sergeant, has to be there when we talk about one of their uh, service members. Thanks. Hey,
Hey, uh, good morning. My name is uh, Sergeant Major Bivens from Madigan Army Medical Center, and on behalf of the commander, uh, Colonel Michael Place, who couldn't be here today, I want to give you an update on what's going on uh, with your hospital here in Madigan. Next slide. We recently have been getting some confusion among our patients on what a refill is versus what a renewal is. Uh, a renewal is when you have a normal prescription and you have refills on that prescription. If you pick the bottle up and it's got a little word called refill at the bottom, any number greater than zero, you have a refill. Uh, when it gets in the number to refill it is on the bottle, up here, and on our website. Uh, if that number gets to zero and you still need your medication, we have what's called a renewal. Now, the renewal is you get a hold of your, your provider uh, through uh, the patient portal, or, and we will get you a renewal on that medication. If they need to see you, they'll have you come in. So we've been getting significant confusion on those two terms, so renewal versus refill. Next slide, please. Um, March is TBI Awareness Month. Uh, as all of y'all know here in this room, TBIs are very prevalent among the military population. We do dangerous things and we get bonked on the head on a regular basis, especially those uh, paratroopers out there who don't know how, quite how to do a PLF. I'm one of them. It's important uh, that we do this because you can see the stats up there. Uh, nationwide, it looks like 137 people a day you know, die from TBI-related injuries across the country. Significant number. So for those who may or may not know, we are opening an intrepid spirit uh, on the Madigan campus. This is designed for uh, traumatic brain injuries. We're doing a dedication ceremony for the facility on April 5th to officially open it. Next slide, please. We also have a uh, nutrition month. We're gonna have a uh, Lieutenant Ivanova come up and talk about nutrition for you. Good morning. I'm the Assistant Chief of Community and Nutrition and Outpatient Nutrition at Madigan, and March is National Nutrition Month. And the theme this year is go further with food. So that's a very broad theme, and it reminds us if we, are, regardless if we're starting the day off with a healthy breakfast or fueling for a mission, the foods we choose absolutely make an impact on our performance. We have events uh, planned throughout JBLM that, uh, again, emphasize readiness, the performance triad, and gives the service members an opportunity to interact with their dietitians. Slide, please. So we have a whole grain tasting day where, again, it's an opportunity for service members to try whole grains, some new things that they haven't tried before, uh, some new flavors. And we have an Ask the Register Dietitian booth uh, throughout uh, JBLM. Again, this is an opportunity for soldiers to interact with the dietitians, and uh, today we are going to be at Courage Inn. Slide, please. We also have commissary booths, so this is an opportunity for um, the dietitian to walk around with uh, service members or whoever is at the commissary and uh, make decisions whenever they're shopping. And lastly, we have performance nutrition and supplement safety booths at the gyms. We also have games where uh, they're wearing fat suits and see like about 20 pounds, see if they can do um, push-ups and sit-ups the same way if they were, for example, 20 pounds heavier. Okay, thank you. Sure, sir. Are you guys doing anything on the McCord field side? I saw a whole lot of Lewis and, and Army. Is anything on McCord at all? No, no, sir. The answer is no. Okay. Could we talk about that after? That'd be great. Thank you. We can definitely do that for you, sir. All right. Also, in align with the performance triad, uh, you know, it's sleep, activity, and nutrition. Uh, sleep is uh, Sleep Awareness Month is, or week is coming up, and sleep is a vital component of that performance triad. As many of y'all know who try to go on uh, you know, sleep deprivation, it definitely affects your cognitive ability. So just please keep in mind that sleep is critically important, you know, six to seven hours, seven to eight hours. <laughs> Help, I'll read the slide. It's important. Uh, most of us wearing some version of the uniform, we know we don't get enough sleep. It's, it's the nature of our job. But sleep is critically important to our ability to function. Next slide, please. With uh, the MHS Genesis, uh, you're, if your people are having issues with the portal, uh, especially with the log on, here is the number to reach out and contact them to, t to help you with the portal as we're moving forward uh, with Genesis. Next slide, please. Uh, as of January of this year, there's been a significant change to TRICARE Prime benefit, beneficiaries' benefits. 
a, uh, if you're in TRICARE Prime and you're not an active duty service member, you know, Army, Air Force, Navy, Marines, you can get an urgent care visit without a referral, and there is no limit on these. Uh, used to be you had a limit of two. Now it's unlimited urgent care referrals without a referral. Now, once again, if you're wearing this uniform, Army, Air Force, Navy, Marine, you have to go see your military provider. That's pretty cool. My, my wife's excited about this one. Uh, next slide. I think that's it. Uh, barring any questions uh, concerning Madigan, myself and the team will be here after the uh, presentation if y'all like some one-on-one -on -one conversations. Thanks. Next. Good morning. I'm Kathy with Department of Public Works Environmental. I'm here to talk to you today about Try and Go Transit. Those of you who've tried our program know it works really well. Check out our GoLewisMcCord.com site if you want to get off base. I was talking to Sergeant Morehouse the other day. He was waiting for, the, waiting for the shuttle as he was going back to his barracks. He rides it to and from work even though he has a car. Um, and he uses it to go off post to Seattle because it's just so much easier. Keep it in mind. Uh, it's all, weather's changing. Don't forget we have a bike share. You want to check out a bike, check out the reception center. Um, North Fort, we have one in the barracks. McCord, we've got two sites. So keep us in mind. we got options. Madigan, we absolutely have a great big pile of bikes over there ready for anybody to use. Keep fit. Keep going. And if you're interested in particularly having and hosting a satellite bike fleet, maybe you have some injured um, injured service members who need to do some PT, you can consider the bike share as an option for that too. Give me a call. I'm gonna be at the back if you need me. Next slide. March is water month, so we're really talking about storm water this month. And one of the things that we need to make really clear is that nothing but rain goes down the drain on JBLM. Okay, just making everybody aware of that. If you've got something that doesn't look right, give us a call, um, report a spill to 911. But household hazardous waste is particularly pertinent because as people start thinking about PCSing, we want to capture all that. You can't pay, take it with you. Bring, if you live on JBLM, bring it down to Building 1210. That's the environmental building, and we can take it from you. If you don't live on JBLM, there's a pamphlet on your, um, on your table, and the back page has all the different locations where you can take that household hazardous waste. If you have any questions, please call. Next slide, please. JBLM Community Gardens, just thinking about getting out and playing in the dirt. Don't forget, we have two community gardens, one on McCord, one on Lewis North. We also support the uh, Wounded Warrior Transition Battalion Garden, the Healing Garden, and there's a CDC garden um, at Raindrops and Rainbows. So if you want to get out there and grow your own food, um, we have veteran gardeners who can help you out. As a matter of fact, it doesn't just open to on-base housing residents, open to everyone. We have a retiree at the Lewis North Garden who has a huge garden at home, but she also keeps a box on Lewis North and just grows kale for her rabbit. So keep in mind, we got help. And I just wanted to let you know on your, de on your tables, there is a pamphlet that talks about the um, Hazmat Has Waste program that we offer. So if you guys are getting ready to go to training or go downrange, give us a call. We'll, s we'll hook you up. Okay, make sure that those materials are in good shape and your rear D is ready to do maintenance while you're gone. Everyone want com environmental compliance. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Good morning. Can you all hear me? I'm Nancy Barnes with the Residential Community Initiative Office. It's a fancy word for DPW housing. I brought Nathaniel Stevens from Lincoln Military Housing and we want to talk to you about the DA survey. Go ahead. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, our annual housing survey is upon us. Launches April 26th. We'll run through May 25th. Uh, this year, um, I should tell you, our goal is maximum participation. Last year, JBLM achieved a 42% response, response rate, as opposed to the year prior, 14%. So a huge uptick last year. That's great really pushing for max participation this year. We've upped the ante as far as prizes. Uh, we're gonna draw five $250 gift cards per week uh, throughout uh, the month of the drawing, or the month of the uh, survey. And then at the conclusion of the survey, uh, the partnership is gonna draw a grand prize of uh, one month free rent. Um, so pretty cool there. But beyond all the prizes, the most important thing is that the feedback that we receive uh, in the survey 
those anecdotal points that we get back really help drive future discussion for capital projects and ultimately gain approval. And we've seen that with some of the projects we've been able to execute recently. So your participation is very important. Uh, please spread the word. Next slide, please. So coming up, uh, Friday, March 23rd, we've got our bingo night at the American Lake Club. Uh, last year, we held it at the McCord Club. Uh, really had standing room only. Didn't quite have enough room, so we've moved it over to the American Lake Club. We generally get a pretty, pretty big turnout at that event. Um, and that's another opportunity to win great prizes and learn more about the survey upcoming. And then, of course, our um, survey um, closing the end of May. But uh, you're going to see um, here coming up uh, communication regarding our launch parties at all the different communities. Uh, so stay tuned to that. That's coming up. Next slide, please. So what I want to point out to you is that um, what Nathaniel was talking about is the return rate. That's really important because we want to um, get it down to the uh, junior enlisted. We're not seeing the feedback from the junior enlisted. So we ask you to push it down to the unit level. Let them know how important it is that we listen to what they're saying, their needs for housing, and that way we can get better projects for them. So the top, top three were Eagle View, Beechwood, Broadmoor, and Evergreen. Over 50% responded. And the overall satisfactory winner, wait for it, Westcott. So they were the number one that was satisfied with housing in the project and their facilities that they live in. So we again, we really want to push it down to the uh, lower ranks and get their feedback. And when we get their feedback as far as the DA survey, Nathaniel's team and my team, we have to answer every single one of them, and we do. So we do want to hear from them. Next slide. Okay, um, the most important piece to receive the survey, we've got to have a valid email address on file. So if you're unsure, please contact your local community office and uh, get that email address validated and updated. We are going to do a ping test in a couple weeks. Um, we do that in conjunction with CEL, uh, who generates the survey, um, just to make sure that we don't get any bounce backs. The, the bounce backs we do get, we will reach out to those families directly and try to get the email validated and updated. But uh, the more you can help us, the better. So thank you. OK, and then uh, I touched on some of this stuff coming up. Uh, we have, of course, our monthly spouses uh, club that we host every month. And then um, also, I think the most important thing to watch out for is those, uh, those uh, launch parties that are going to be happening in each community coming up here soon. Okay. That's it. Any questions regarding the survey? Morning, everybody. My name is Kelly Wetzel with MWR. Just a quick rundown of the fun stuff that we've got going on in the next couple of months. Um, first one is if you know somebody who would like to be a lifeguard looking for some extra employment, maybe you've got a, an older high school student or a college student coming home, uh, the job fair for lifeguards. We, we got to keep the pools open. If we don't have lifeguards, they don't, they don't open. So we need lifeguards. March 9th is their, uh, the lifeguard job fair. And then Trivia Night at the McCord Club on the 23rd. Uh, we have a, a couple of members of the winning teams here today. Uh, but it's a, a lot of fun. We've got uh, DJ coming out, and he does a great job on trivia. And we've got really good prizes. Uh, we've got uh, gift cards to the, the PXBX commissary for uh, some of the prizes this time. And then a smaller program that you might not know about, the library runs a March Madness Mania reading program. If you've got children reading age and pre-reading age, you can read to them and the kids can actually get credit for those books. And they've got some fun prizes at the end of the month. So uh, stop into the book patch on uh, Lewis, Maine, and you can get your kids signed up for that program. And then on the right-hand side, warming up for St. Patrick's Day on March 16th, that Friday before St. Patrick's Day at the McCord Pub. We've got the Easter Dash March 31st, the Saturday before Easter, so they're looking at a much larger group of kids. There's usually over 1,000 children. They're looking at more than that this time because it's not Easter Sunday. Uh, and then Easter Brunch at the McCord Club on April 1st. They are already taking reservations. If you've got a particular time that you want to go, it's either noon, 10 a.m., noon, or 1 o'clock seatings. It, I would make your reservation pretty quick because some of them are getting pretty close to full. Next slide, please. 
And then we talked about sports. Commander's Cup sports, that is the list here. So Commander's Cup soccer, bowling, golf, and basketball all have meetings coming up. So if you've got your unit or squadron sports rep, they need to attend those meetings so that your team can participate. And then we've got open sports. Open spring softball, the meeting is coming up very quickly, the 15th at noon. Open flag football and open women's basketball. Open sports are, are open. They are open to any member of your squadron or unit or your family members who are over 18 or civilian employees. So if you would like to play in a sport and you don't have a team you're attached to, show up for one of those meetings because they will actually put you on a team. If you want to play sports, a great opportunity to get involved. And this is just our spring sports. We'll be running sports all the way through, all, all year round. And then that last slide. Just a quick rundown of things happening in April and then a future look at what's happening in May. Uh, the big things are Armed Forces Kids Run at Cowan Stadium. That's an annual event. The Big Bang Variety Show, that was a show that was postponed in November and they are bringing, it's an Army Entertainment show. They're bringing that back to this room, Nelson Recreation Center. It is a show for folks that are 18 and older only. So it's an adult show and tickets are available online. They're 10 bucks a piece. Uh, the Spring Flea Market was mentioned earlier. And then into May, the Parent Sundance. We've got Care Fair coming back. We're not quite sure where the location is yet. More than likely, it'll be American Lake Conference Center. Uh, but it is that, that is an annual event, and it's usually very, very popular. Um, and then Mother's Day brunch, and the big one is Armed Forces Day that we're moving over to the McCord Field for the first time this year, and that's on the 19th of May. Are there any questions? Thanks a lot. Have a great day. Good morning. I'm Sergeant Williams. I'm president of the BOSS program here on JBLM. Uh, so you already know how, how we do with BOSS. Uh, we are quality of life, community service, and rec and leisure for single service members here on JBLM. Next slide, please. So JBLM, um, uh, we basically have a lot of volunteer events for single service members this month. Just this past Saturday, BOSS got a bunch of volunteers, single service members, go down to Ording's uh, old soldier's home and we basically helped out with the veterans there. It was their uh, casino day. So we got to accompany a veteran of our own throughout the entire day, took them around, and they got to play games. And it was a really awesome experience. So BOSS is going to start volunteering with the Washington Soldiers Home monthly. And next month they have a fishing derby. So volunteerism is for anybody, not just single service members. So if you're interested in volunteer opportunities, then you can um, definitely get with the boss. So we're also helping out with the Easter Dash. Uh, it's an MWR run event, but boss is gathering volunteers uh, to help bag candy for the kids. We set up like a little factory in our office. We're bagging candy. Like we've done thousands of bags so far. So We'll definitely need some help with that. And also on the day of, we'll need an Easter bunny and people to help you know, set out the Easter eggs and whatnot. Um, we also have the Shamrock and Run this Saturday. This is a good event for Boss to generate funds for future events. So we're gonna be selling beer uh, in our little bar area that we built. So if you're interested uh, in helping Boss volunteer, then you know, get with us after, uh, after this. Does anyone have any questions? All right. Well, thank you. That's it. Good morning, leaders, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Mark Gothier, the Garrison Chaplain and Senior Pastor for the Main Post Protestant Service. Direct your attention to some of the programs that we have going on on our base. Faith and Family University Night is opportunities for faith education for kids from the youngest to the very oldest, both campuses simultaneously, Lewis and McCord, on Wednesday evenings. Then also notice the key events on the bottom, plenty of opportunities to worship and celebrate through the holy season, holy week. Next slide, please. Combined Protestant Good Friday service where seven of your chaplains will each deliver one of the words of Christ on the cross as a meditation. Just to imagine seven chaplains doing a total message in 35 minutes, it can be done. So just come for that. Next slide, please. And then Easter Sunday service. Last Sunday, we had a guest appearance by who we call Rocky the Resurrection Raccoon. So if DPW hasn't shipped him away, maybe he'll come back by popular demand. Are there any questions? Very good, thank you.
morning. I'm Sylvia with the exchange. Um, as you can see on the screen, we have several different events going on at both Lewis and McCord exchanges. Um, just to highlight a few, Lewis Main Exchange um, has a Leprechaun Military Star Card event going on, um, an Easter fashion show on McCord Exchange. There um, will be a free jewelry cleaning on Saturday, book readings, a Marvel event, Disney event. Uh, the Lewis Mini Mall GameStop will be open on 26 March from 2100 to 2130 for the release of Far Cry. And at your Lewis Food Court, on the ends, we'll have $1 pretzel Tuesdays all month long. Next slide. And then just in case you missed last week's um, update, we have a new business option where U.S. command units and government agencies will receive a 10% discount on purchases with their government purchase card. You can register online at shopmyexchange.com forward slash business delivery. Any questions? Thank you. Good morning, my name is Serena West and I am the president of the Lewis Community Spouses Club. It is hard to believe, but we are officially down to the last two months of this board year. So we are actively looking for people who are interested in filling positions for the 2018-2019 board. We have a board of almost 30 people, so it's a lot of positions to fill. I like to think of it more as a team. Um, and as a result, we are asking people to come join our team. We're looking for people who are highly motivated, who have a heart for volunteerism, and who understand the importance of helping spouses here at JBLM get connected and stay connected. Um, so the in contact information is there. You can contact our parliamentarian. Uh, information is in the Constitution as well as an application that's available online if you are interested. Um, two additional notes that are not on the slide. We were graciously given a little bit of a longer deadline from American Lake for ACE Night, our annual charity event, which is next Friday starting at 5.30. So last I heard, there were about 30 tickets remaining. So if you missed the deadline, today is your lucky day. Um, please do it by the end of today. Our count is due early tomorrow morning. The second piece of information is that the hours for Operation Deploy Your Dress, our, uh, the branch of LCSC that provides one free dress to military dependents and service members per year with an ID card, um, now has March hours available on our Facebook page, and that is Operation Deploy Your Dress, JBLM. Any questions? Thank you. Um, good morning, everyone. My name is Kim Crosby, and I work with the FOCUS program. Um, I just want to ask real quick, have any of you heard about FOCUS before? Awesome. Good. I'm glad to see some hands up. Um, I always want to clarify um, the difference between there's the FOCUS program, which I work for, and there's also the FOCUS magazine here at JBLM, and they're two different entities. Um, sometimes I have folks coming up to me saying, oh my gosh, I love those photos you put in the magazine this month. Um, and I always have to kind of uh, clarify that I didn't have anything to do with it. It's a great magazine, though, so I would always advocate for checking out the Focus magazine. But the Focus program, what are we about? Um, we stand for Families Overcoming Under Stress. And what we're doing is we're working with individual families. And when I say families, that includes families that have children between ages 3 and 18, that also includes couples. Um, sometimes we have couples coming into the program that don't have children, and so that is the family. Sometimes they come into the program without their children, um, just as a couple. So when I say families, I'm including families that have children between ages three and 18, and then also couples. Um, one thing I always mention too about couples is that they don't have to be married. So if they're in a dating relationship or engaged, they can come into this program. Um, and we've had a lot of folks utilize that. Um, so I always want to indicate uh, that's something to keep in mind. So we have families and couples coming in. It's just one family coming in to meet with one of our trainers. It's not um, big classes or groups of families and couples. It's just you and your family coming in to meet with one of us through a series of sessions, usually about six to eight visits. And what we're doing in our program is we're building up um, 
and reviewing the strengths and the skills that already exist or maybe um, need to have a little bit more strength in them so that the family can get through the different challenges that you all deal with, uh, whether it's military-related challenges, particularly maybe around deployments or training missions, um, just daily military lifestyle. Um, and then there's also just regular other things that come up around um, transitions, PCSing, financial stress, relationship stress, um, situations with children in school or with friends. Um, everyone has different levels of stress that we all have to have coping skills, ways to manage through it. So our program is meant to be kind of a strengthening program. It's not therapy or counseling. We're really focusing on what are the skills that you and your family or you and your partner are using to manage through the different tra challenges um, and transitions you might be dealing with. It's a free program, I always want to mention that, and we're available all year round. So at any point in time, if you're interested in the program or if you know someone that might be interested in the program, they can come in. Um, there isn't a starting point in our program, it's just whenever you want to come in. And I always try to say to folks, if you haven't come into the FOCUS program, why? Why haven't you taken advantage of it? It's a free program available to everyone. So we really want to encourage folks to think about it um, as something that just about anybody could come to. Um, I also want to indicate, em, em, emphasize that it's a confidential program. We're not linked to the military computer system, so everything that is shared in our sessions stays in our sessions, unless it's something we're mandated to break confidentiality around that has to do with serious safety concerns for yourself, others, or some kind of abuse going on. Um, otherwise, everything is very private and confidential in these visits with our trainer. All of our trainers have some, um, some level of mental health background. Um, so we have a master's level or higher is, is, uh, is the criteria for each of our trainers. Um, we're not acting as clinicians in our role, but it does give us a lot of background information to be able to support families, to provide education, um, and then also to be a gateway to other services. So in our sessions with families, we really get a good picture of what's going on, and then we can help link families to other services around JBLM, because as, as you all know, there's a lot of great resources here. Um, and so sometimes it's hard for families to know about them or to know where to go, and we can help with some of that linking as well from our sessions. Uh, we also offer what we call family-friendly hours, and that means that we will schedule appointments at the best time that family can come in. That might be morning, that might be afternoon, it might be late in the evening. I've done uh, many Friday nights at 6.30 uh, with a family coming in, and, um, and so we want to make sure that we can be as flexible as possible for families to come in. Um, let's see, also just want to mention we do consultations, so if there's a single service member um, that wants to come in or a family wants to get some of the skills that we teach but might not be able to go through the whole program, then they can come in for what we call a consultation, which is kind of a one-time session. Um, next slide, please. So this is our contact information. Um, there isn't a specific referral process. Families can just call us up. They can come to our office. They can shoot us an email. Um, JBLM at focusproject.org comes to me. I'm the site director of the program, so you can put a face to an email. Um, and so they just give us a call. We take down a little bit of initial information, and then we schedule the first appointment as soon as they're ready to come in. We never have a wait list. That's very important to us because we recognize it's not always easy to make that phone call and say, hey, we want to get some extra support. Um, so we try to schedule appointments right away for families and couples to come into the program. Um, does anyone have any questions? Wonderful. Thank you so much, and I look forward to seeing some of you in our program. Thank you. Hello, everybody. I'm Karen Tusing. I'm the chairman of the Thrift Shop Board on Fort Lewis. And um, I'm excited to let you know about some new hours we have at the Thrift Shop. Uh, we are now open on Wednesdays from 3 to 6 p.m. And I know for many people on active duty, that's still going to be difficult. But if you come during your lunch break um, or if you come, you know, at the end of the day, um, in mil in uniform, active duty, go to the front of the line. So please come and check us out. Um, and uh, we are open also the first Saturday of each month. And if you are interested in consigning 
things, that's on Tuesdays and Thursdays only. But we are open for shopping as well on Wednesdays. Next slide, please. Um, I, this map might be difficult to see, but um, sometimes when people use uh, maps, Bing maps don't give you the right directions. Um, Google Maps does. We're also on the MWR's map um, with a location, but we are um, behind the fence on Pendleton and in between North Division and 4th Street. And we have two buildings. Sometimes people who've been shopping for months don't even realize they've only been going to one building th the whole time. Um, next slide, please. And this is what our buildings look like. So some people think maybe they can't find us because they're looking for something that looks like a nice looking store. But we are in these warehouses or maybe these were motor poles at one time, I don't know. But um, they're not the most retail looking buildings, but they're great on the inside. So um, one of our buildings is where you can drop off donations anytime even if we're not open, you can put your donations in the little red shed. Um, if, you're, if we are open, we ask you to bring your donations right into the building. Um, that is building 2070. And then in the other building, uh, Tuesdays and Thursday mornings, you can bring in your consignments. Okay, next slide, please. Um, I would like to offer some tips for donating. Um, you'd be surprised at <laughs> what so sort of things we get in donations. And, um, you know, we would really appreciate it if you would clean your things first. Um, because, to be honest, if it's, if it's not clean enough, it ends up in the garbage. And that's not what anybody wants. You took the time to donate it. We would like to be able to sell it to another family member. Um, so again, it should not be something that's broken or missing parts um, or clothing that's very pilled. And my little general rule of thumb is, if you wanted to give your neighbor's kids, your kids outgrown clothes, would you give them your really gross, out, the gross outgrown, outgrown clothes? Sorry. No, you wouldn't give them broken toys. So please throw those things away and bring us things that, you know, a, you would want a soldier's family to buy, you know, they don't they don't deserve broken things So please take the time and do that yourself because um, We can't really Sit there and continue to go through all of this garbage for hundred thousand families so or hundred thousand people um, and If you have if it's not worth a dollar throw it away if it's um, if it's sets of things you know please it, it'd be helpful if you put it in a ziploc bag it'll get out on the floor sooner and and then somebody who's looking for a set a toy set will get the whole set um, and then in the end unfortunately we cannot accept mattresses box springs and baby car seats and it does break my heart if you have a, like an infant car seat the best thing to do is try to find somebody else in your unit that would like it um, and give it to them or find somebody to give it to um, because our safety um, inspector says we are not authorized to sell used car seats. Okay, next slide, please. Um, we have many volunteer opportunities um, Monday through Thursday during the school day. And I say that because um, right now, there are only two active duty spouses or spouses of active duty members that are volunteering. Two of all the people stationed here. And so it kind of breaks my heart, you know, that there are so many active duty spouses that can't find four hours in a month, once a month, to come in and volunteer. But we do appreciate the donations, so thank you for that. Um, if you are interested in volunteering, um, we do offer um, reimbursement for childcare. Now I know that's hard to get, so if you were going to do it regularly and say I'm gonna come the third Wednesday of every month, maybe you could get that booked in advance and we would reimburse you if you have preschool aged kids and um, so you could still volunteer if you wanted to, um, you know, without it costing you if, if you can get the childcare. Um, and then if you have high school students, uh, now that we're open on Wednesdays from 3 to 6 p.m., it's a great opportunity for high school students who need their service hours. 
And of course, the first Saturday of the month, uh, another opportunity um, for teenagers or, or spouses. Um, and I have to apologize, the slides that went out um, yesterday on email had some incorrect hours. So please note the hours. Um, if there should be one of these on your table, um, and I have many more if you would like to take any with you, but the Wednesday hours, 9 to 2.30 and 3 to 6. And that's, we just started yesterday. It's the first time we're doing it, and we are having to shut down temporarily to change our um, cash, cash registers and stuff. So um, those hours are correct on your flyer, and they are correct on today's slide, but not on the ones that went out on email. So um, please stop by the back tables um, if you'd like any more of these flyers. And I also have trifolds that have a little more detail about volunteer opportunities and consignment information. Okay, thank you very much. Oh, I think I had one more page. No, okay, that was it, you went backwards. Okay. Hi, um, I'm Ronald Lewis, I'm the grocery manager at here on Lewis. Ma'am, I apologize for missing my turn. I have a water leak at home. Um, first, um, I started this monthly sale about mid-month back in December. Um, if you have not came to this, this is a good sale in mid-month. I usually do it around payday. Um, I have up to 50% off, about 80, 85% of the stuff that's in the sale is in the warehouse, in the, in the commissary. Um, up to about 50% off, sometimes even more. So it's a good opportunity uh, to come out mid-month, save you some money. Um, Cause we doesn't, right now the case lot thing, we don't, we don't have right now at the commissary. So this is just a sale that I started each month and I will continue to do it every month. We have it coming up on the 16th or the 20th of this month. Uh, next slide. We have uh, St. Patty's Day here at Lewis and McCord. Um, they're gonna manage the specials for the produce and the meat department. Next slide. March Madness, um, basketball March Madness tournaments are starting. If you want um, trays, just give them 24 hours. They, we even making sushi trays now. Um, just uh, 24 to 48 hours at both stores, give them a call. Next slide. Now we have self-service bagging lanes. Here on Lewis is the 17, 18, and 19, and at McCord is registers two, three, and four. Those lanes are designed for if you want to bag your own groceries. Um, you, can, you know, if you go to those lanes, remember you have to bag your own groceries. You know, don't cheat to go to those lanes and, and want a bagger because the other lanes are long but you will not get a bagger. So if you go to those lanes, remember those are, it's just an extension of self-checkout, but it's a faster process because the cashiers can ring you up faster and then at that same time, you can um, check your own self out, bag your own groceries. But both stores have them, big signs, and they, they will not open until the stores actually open at nine. Next slide. And here at Lewis, um, we, I've been here since 2011, and we've been fighting to change the hours, and we finally got them. Our hours match McCord. So Sunday is from 10, 1,100 to 1,900, and then Monday through Saturday is 09 to 2,000. Um, that gives everybody, because we used to close different Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Now it's hours that are set, and they match McCord um, day for day which is a good thing for everyone. Thank you. Any questions? Thanks. Thank you. Thanks everybody for, for all the information. Um, so the next garrison update is gonna be the 4th of April. We'll be over at the McCord Club. We did get off a little bit on the battle rhythm, so I apologize for that, because obviously today is Thursday. Um, we won't do that again. 
because uh, I know you know it's hard to, to shift when we move the day. So I apologize for that, and I, I thank you guys for being here. Again, four April's our next one. So before we wrap up, um, questions. What questions do you have? What information were you looking for that you didn't get that we might be able to answer? The, the installation team is here, um, so I can address those if you got anything. All right, so there's a test. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, I do want to just highlight a couple of things. We talked about some important things in here this morning, and I know you guys would argue that everything that we talked about is important, so don't take it the wrong way. But please, as you walk out of here, remember CRC, IDC change is coming. That affects our squadron and battalion uh, leadership. The housing survey is really important for us. JBLM did really good last year with 42%, but please help us spread the word. And if you're like me, this is sad to admit, but how do you check if your email is good? You, everyone's got a, you know, a district office. It was up on the screen. That's how you check to make sure your email address is correct. And if when you signed your lease with Lincoln, if you used your dot mil, it's probably getting kicked back or spam or something. So it's worth checking that because that's the best way for us to communicate with you about the housing survey. And I can tell you from me personally, I didn't have my stuff right in, in, in terms of getting information from Lincoln. So um, we can help you with that. Lincoln's gonna do a great job. I mean, they're gonna offer, if you are registered and you take the survey, your name is in the drawing for those gift cards, your name is in the drawing for one month um, free rent at the end. And what we really need you to do is help us spread the word to all your units so we can get the feedback. Because the, I don't know if Nathaniel's still here, the Lincoln does an awesome job at addressing the things that you bring up. Um, sometimes those things that get addressed, new sidewalks, new driveways, those don't always feel like good things, but they're actually good things um, that we can make changes and repairs to our communities uh, that benefit us for the long run. So I really um, appreciate your support on that. The quick note about the lifeguard, if you have a kid coming home from college that wants to be a lifeguard this summer, please grab the paperwork that you need for that now, because in order for us to keep the pools open this summer for all of our kiddos, we need to hire the lifeguards. And if they wait till they come home from college, we will not be able to hire them in, in time. I wish I could fix that. We're working on that part, but what I need from you is please, if you, it's a great summer job, and it allows us to open our capacity on JBLM for the kids in the summer, but you have to apply early. Um, and you can see me directly on that if you need help with getting the information, or you go to the job fair, get what we need, it's on Friday, and, you know, and we can help you get that paperwork filled up. This hurt us last year, if you were here last summer, we didn't have enough lifeguards. So on the vein of what do I need if we're hiring spouses, DA security guards and CYS and CDC employees. In order for us to maintain the access control plans and return some of that BMM from the gates, we have huge, huge hiring fares for the DA security guards. And in order for us to use our capacity that we have in the CDCs, I need to hire those childcare workers. Those two jobs are hard to hire for, so helping me spread the word to spouses and families that these job fairs are happening um, and, and that, that the need is out there, um, I would really appreciate because those are, the, those are the two areas that if I can hire to the requirement, we can really improve uh, the, the service and support that we provide to the entire community. Um, commissary did some neat changes uh, with the hours and I, you know, they're really, the, those self-checkout lanes are, it's kind of all about you guys. It's all about our family. So keep giving us that feedback and we'll try to respond to, to that stuff that you give us. Um, okay, one last chance for questions. Alibis, do you guys have anything? Um, General Burleson, sir, uh, General San Luis, uh, Colonel Snelson, um, thank you all for, for being here um, today and for all of you for your support. And I, I don't know, gentlemen, if you have any closing comments. We'll... All right, thanks again.